What's up YouTube? Today we're going to make an old school echo chamber. Now there's basically three parts to this process. You need an echoey room in your house, a mic or two, and some speakers. And that's it. You can play around a lot with different speaker placements and mic placements and stuff, but really the best thing to do is to just go into the room, clap your hands, and see where the best echo is originating from. Ultimately, you can do this for really cheap. I think I put mine together for maybe a hundred bucks. It doesn't super matter what mics you use because you're gonna band pass them so strongly. You don't need the lows, you don't need the highs. Same thing, I just got some speakers from Goodwill and a cheap amp, and that's it. I probably spent more on cables than I did on the rest of the equipment. So, I'll show you how it's set up. So I take my monitor outs to an amp and then I'm running some very long cables along the ceiling. So the reason I'm using this room is A, there's a nice little echo, and B, it's a little on the short side. So, yeah, you know, it's a nice way to use a space that otherwise wouldn't get used for anything. All right, so here we got the project that I'm gonna show you. I have a couple cello parts that I recorded for this song. So here's the section that I'm gonna run through the chamber uh, dry. And now, because I've already recorded this by simply sending the audio out through my interface to the echo chamber speakers, and then immediately recording the return signal from the mics, here's what this sounds like soloed. And note that for this, I have a simple you know high pass, low pass setup, and there's already actually something like that on the way in with the uh, API vision here. So I'm high passing at 100 and low passing at about 7.5k. Uh, I'm just doing that because it gets muddy up there and down there especially. You don't want to have any sort of boom going on below 100, that's for sure. And you could even get a little more forceful with this. So this is just the chamber return. So a little band passy. And now let's hear it in context. So you can mix this in any amount you want. So as you can hear, while I switch between those two, there's a lot of just liveness and a sense of coherence that develops because all of those sounds are being put into the same space. It creates a much more believable impression of an orchestra rather than a bunch of single close mic'd parts. Because again, I'm playing all these parts one by one with the echo chamber it just makes it sound like, uh, like more than one person. So to sum up, all you need to do is take an audio out from your interface to some speakers, and it could actually be the speakers in your studio, and you could just use the studio as your echo chamber. Then place a pair of mics, or even a single mic if you'd like a mono return, that's fine too. Send it back in the interface, and you've captured the reflections of the natural room sound. I think there's something really magical about using a physical space that's still... Digital and analog stuff is definitely easier to work with in a lot of ways. But there's something really fun about just the physical nonlinearities and a little bit of chaos that emerges from a uh, physical space. 
So all right, I hope this was useful and fun and informative. And if you did enjoy it, please do like and subscribe. And we'll see you next time. Until then, keep having fun with that natural reverb. <laughs>